Hey, it's Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training, and in this video, we're gonna be going over three bad infield habits that you wanna be sure to avoid. So if you're ready for that, if you're an infielder, if you're excited to learn these three habits, please smash that thumbs up button, I'd really appreciate it. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button because we're coming out with brand new videos on a weekly basis, and I don't want you to miss any of them. So subscribe, turn your notifications on. All right, let's jump into these three bad habits. All right, so let's get into the first bad habit that you definitely want to avoid, and that is letting the ball play you versus you playing the ball. So we've always got to remember that we can't be lazy with our feet, and we can't be lazy or lackadaisical when a ground ball is hit our way, because you've got to realize that the more times the ball bounces, the higher the likelihood that it's going to take a bad hop, right? If it bounces 37 times on the way to us, it has a higher likelihood to take a bad hop than it does if it only bounces two or three times, right? And so are you going to be able to be aggressive and charge, you know, sprint forward and really hard charge every single ground ball? No, of course not. Sometimes the ball is going to be hit your way and it's going to be hot. It's going to be coming at you quick and you're not going to have time to really charge it. And that's okay. Just field it cleanly and you have plenty of time. Or sometimes a ground ball is hit your way and it's a screamer and it actually makes more sense to take a step backward to field it on the high hop. So that might be uh, something to consider as well. So it's not like you want to charge every single ground ball super hard that hits your way. It kind of depends but I'm talking about a routine ground ball here don't just wait back here we always want to be proactive we want to be aggressive as an infielder we don't want to be defensive so we don't want to see the balls hit our way and we just wait back here for it to come to us if it's a routine play and if you can take a few steps forward and cut down that distance that's awesome because the next piece to remember is that hitter that just hit that ball, he's sprinting up the line, right? So every single second that you wait back here and you're letting the ball play you, that's the second that he's sprinting up the line. Then by the time the ball gets to you, that's you know the, the ball that you, you kind of bobble because you have to hurry to get your throw off. We don't want to hurry. We want to position ourselves to where, boom, routine ground ball, hit my way, let me charge it if I can, get around it slightly, get my momentum going towards my target, and then I can field it cleanly and I have enough time to make a good throw, okay? so. Play the ball, don't let the ball play you. The next bad habit that I think you'll be able to see a little bit better from this angle is a poor back angle. So what I'm talking about is when I approach the ground ball and I get into my fielding position, a good fielding position, my back is actually gonna be parallel with the ground. So if this is the ground, my back is obviously going to be parallel with the ground like this. Okay, so you see what I did there? As I approach and get into my fielding position, my back is parallel with the ground. What you'll find is you're low to the ground in this position, but your butt is not low. My butt in this position is actually high, all right? But getting in this position is going to put you in a lot better position for bad hops. Bad hops, when you get into this position, are going to bounce off of your chest versus if you do the opposite, if you change your back angle and if you actually focus on getting your butt low to the ground. So if you approach it like this and you get your butt low to the ground, where's the bad hop going to go here? It's probably going to hit me in the face and that's not going to be good. And another thing, I want you to try this at home. We're always taught to start from the ground and work up. And we're always taught to have our hands out in front of us, right? What position out of the two that I just demonstrated is it easier to get your hands to the ground and get your hands out front? What I find is when I kind of squat down like this and my back angle changes, it's hard if I take my glove off, it's hard for me to touch the ground, let alone get my hand out front in this position here. But if I change my back angle from this to this, now I can put my palms flat on the ground and it's easy for me to get my hand out front like this and my eyes down on the baseball. All right, so just make sure you wanna have good posture, get into a good fielding position, and your back should be parallel to the ground. And then the last bad habit you really wanna be careful that you're not falling into is patting your glove before executing your throw. And this is one of those where you really have to focus on it. You gotta pay attention to it because when you field you know, countless ground balls in practice, it's so easy to just unfortunately fall into this bad habit. But the reason why you wanna avoid fielding the ground ball and then patting before you throw is because if that becomes a habit, you're gonna start patting your glove on plays that you have no business patting your glove on. For example, you know, a close play at first base or on a double play and you kind of mess up the feed and then you pat your glove, that's not going to be good. You're not going to, you know, have as quick of a transfer as you could, right? And, and you know, your play is really going to suffer because of it. So I would just encourage you, try to avoid patting altogether. All right, so what should you focus on? Well, when the ground balls hit your way, focus on when you field the ball, Really make sure that you consciously focus on gathering yourself, 
okay? And you wanna limit the amount of, you know, steps that you're taking too. Ideally, you just, you know, right, left catch and right, left throw, but I think it's better to, if you have to take, if you've got the time to do so, if you have to take additional steps, I think that's better than doing the pat thing. So just make sure you feel the ball, you gather, and if you have to take additional steps before you make your throw, that's fine, but avoid that pat because it's gonna come into play when you don't want it to, all right? Um, and you will see big leaguers occasionally pat their gloves. So I'm not telling you you can never do it. I wouldn't personally get into the habit, but you know, a hot shot, hit at the third baseman, and you know, it's, it's a scorcher hit right at him and he fields it cleanly. You might see him take a little bit more time before he executes that throw. But I would just encourage you, don't get into the bad habit of it. Focus on gather yourself, keep your feet working until you're ready to make your throw.